All right, now turn with me to John 10, 11 through 14, and it says this, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolves attack the flock and scatter it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Let me say that again. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And the title of this message is called Picture Perfect. Picture Perfect. Let's pray. Lord, we honor you. We invite you into this time. We lean into you, Lord. We say come and do what only you can do. And Lord, I pray for Luka Doncic tonight, Lord, that you will give him 60-point game. Lord, I pray that he has energy and excitement and that we will beat the Clippers in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. Well, you know... The, you know, the title is Picture Perfect, but I don't know about you, but as a kid, uh, and even sometimes in my life now, uh, I am, uh, I was a pretty messy teenager, you know, like, I, I was just a dirty person. I, my room was dirty, uh, my bathroom was dirty, uh, you know, I didn't ever really pick up after myself, I would leave my dirty socks laying on the ground, I, I, I wouldn't really clean the dishes, and, you know, and, and I would never really clean up uh, the living room, and uh, the, the worst part is, is that I had two other brothers who were also really messy. We were just a messy family, you know, and I, I pray for my mom. She was a single mom trying to raise his three boys, and uh, she did such a great job. And, but we, we were messy. You know, can I be honest? We were messy. And my mom, you know, would sometimes have company come over. And so, it, you know, every time this happened, we, my mom would wake us up at the break of dawn. And she would be like, boys! And I wake up, I'm like, oh, God, oh. I'm like taking the snot out of my eyes, and I'm like, what is going on? And she's like, get down here right now. And I'm like, oh, God, oh, God. I'm, I'm running downstairs, and I'm like, what is going on? Like, is there a tornado? Is something going on right now? And she's like, you better clean up after yourself right now. And the company's coming over, and I'm like, oh, gosh, like, I'm scrubbing the toilet. I'm sleep- has, has your mom ever done this to you before when company comes over? And, and, and I, I'm washing the dishes. Our, our dishwasher's broken, so I'm like trying to hand clean them and dry them and put them up, and I'm trying to do my laundry, and I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm like, but mom, I want to play Call of Duty with my friends. She's like, shut up and clean the dishes. I'm like, oh, oh God, mom, like, please. <laughs> I thought you were my mom, not a dictator. Like, please. And, uh, you know, I, it would freak me out, and my mom she would, she would just dictate us and tell us to clean up after ourselves, to get ready for the company that's coming over. Our house was normally dirty, but we were trying to impress the people coming over by making our house picture perfect. We, we, were, we were cleaning it and preparing it and getting it ready because we didn't want them to see the mess that we had. And, and we, we wanted to impress them, and we didn't want to be embarrassed by our mess. And, you know, so we cleaned and made it picture perfect. You know, I think sometimes in our lives we can treat like how I treated my house when I was young. I had all this mess. I had all of this, this dirt. I feel like a lot of the times as Christians, we have a lot of pain, a lot of mess, a lot of dirt. And instead of being authentic, instead of being authentic and real with God, we will do like I did and clean it up and try to impress God. Okay, and and this can be a very scary thing because instead of looking authentic and real, we will look picture perfect. And this can this is not a good thing in Christianity because. We don't want to be men and women of God that, that look like we're holy and we have a mask on. And, you know, we, 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 we try to have a script and we say all the Christianese things like, God is good. You know, like, we're, we're like, it's a good day. How are you? I'm blessed. You know, and, and we pray, Father God, come down now, Father God. Like, we need you now. And, and we can put on a mask. We can put on a script. We can put on an act. 
And instead of being authentic and real, we can find ourselves looking picture perfect. How many people know that whenever you get ready for a photo shoot, you're not always uh, gonna go out like how you normally would look, right? You, you wouldn't just step into to a photo shoot looking like you just woke up and you're, you know, your, your hair is messy. No, a lot of the times we put ourselves together. And if we as Christians constantly come into the house of God and go to our prayer times with the mask and looking picture perfect, a lot of the times we will have a disconnect from the truth and the realness of God. God has not called us to put on a mask. He hasn't called us to look picture perfect. He wants us to be authentic and real. And I'm telling you, that is possible tonight. We aren't meant to just put on a mask. We need to look real. So let me ask you a question. Does God know the real you, or does he only know the picture-perfect version of you? Does God, does God know you? Does he know what you go through? Does he know what you like? Does he know the things that you deal with? Does he know what your family goes through? Does he know the real you, or does he only know the, the picture-perfect version of you? And you know, God really does want to know the real you. He doesn't want to know a fake you. He doesn't want to know the you that acts like Pastor Cam. He doesn't want to know the you that tries to impress the people around you. He doesn't want to know you that, that tries to act a certain way to get attention. No, he wants to know the real you, the, the things that you go through, the things that you deal with. And if we can learn to be authentic and real, our lives will change. I think we have a hard time letting people, and more importantly, God, know the real us. God isn't interested in a picture-perfect Christianity. He actually wants to know the real and authentic us. And the reason why we only show our picture-perfect us, our picture-perfect self, is because we have a lack of understanding of who God truly is. And if we don't know who God is, most of the time we will act a certain way to try to please the version that he is. And I think sometimes as Christians, we can see God as a bad God or a judgmental God. And because of that, we don't want to show him our true because we think he will cast us out maybe like your friends did or like, like your other leaders did. And we can view God wrong and we will act accordingly to what we think his character is. We will see God as a bad God and therefore hide the things that we de deal with and try to look picture perfect. And so it, it says in John 10, 11, I am a good shepherd. So can I, can I give you a little bit of context to this text? A, a shepherd, you know, is someone who takes care of sheep. And the sheep really do depend on the shepherd for, for survival. And they depend on the shepherd to, to be good and to be healthy. And if the shepherd was not there, the sheep would be wandering. And sheep, you know, aren't the smartest animal. Uh, you know, they, they need someone to direct them and to guide them. And sheep, uh, you know, normally will do some pretty stupid stuff like, they will walk off and jump over the fence or find a way out and they will find yourself alone. And, and, and it's a weird thing. You know, sheep are not the smartest animal. And um, in, the, in the biblical days, uh, shepherds was, represent, was a representation of leadership, okay? So if you were in leadership, so like the government or like a teacher or, or like a pastor, you, your title would be a shepherd, all right? So the, if you have leadership, you are a shepherd. Sheep, you know, represented us. It, it represented believers. It, it represented people. You know, I wish God really uh, had a representation of Christians more than a sheep. I wish we were like a, a gorilla, you know, or, or like a liger <laughs> or, you know, something more than a sheep. But, you know, I, I guess sheep will do. It is what it is. But but we were a representation, we are a representation of a sheep. And what's crazy is in this is that whenever we have a bad shepherd, it, it 
affects the way a sheep will live. So, so let me explain this. Because if you have had a bad shepherd in your life, so let me say it this way. If you have had a bad leader or bad representation of who God is, it will affect the view that you have on God. It, so whenever you were born into a single family home, and a single mom, maybe your mom raised you on her own or your dad raised you on your own, and you have a bad representation of what the realness and trueness of God is, because God has designed the family to be a two-parent home. It's not supposed to be a separation. So you were born into something that was a bad representation of God. Or maybe you were in, in, in another youth group and a pastor said something to you that affected you, and and then you were hurt and you were sad and you felt like you were taken advantage of. And, and that was a bad representation of the character of God. Or maybe you were in school and you had friends around you and they were the popular group and they began to say different things about you. And then you began to believe it and then you would go home and cry yourself to sleep. That is a bad representation of a shepherd. And whenever we have a bad representation of a leader or a shepherd, we will, we will begin to project what we have experienced on God. And this is a scary place because if we go through hard things, if we go through a single parent home, if we go through bullying, if we go through different things in ministry and at work and in family, then we will project that very thing on God. And this is a scary place because if we see our experience on God, then we will act according to our own experience. And instead of knowing the truth in the Bible, we will begin to live and work and, and, and survive based off of our experience rather than off truth. And if we only experience God out of our own experience, we are limiting the very nature of God to work in our lives, to, to grow us, to mold us, to shape us, to make us healthy. And if we see God as a bad God, as a distance God, as a, as a God that judges, then we're limiting the nature of God. We have had bad experiences that could have shaped the way that we view God. And in John 10, 12 through 13, it says this, the hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolves attack the flock and scatter it. The man ran away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. So have you ever had someone that you trusted, that, that you shared information with, that you, you depended on, and then they ended up abandoning you? Ha have you ever walked into a relationship and you were like, man, this is it, and then all of a sudden they're stabbing you in the back? Have you ever had, a, a, maybe in your family, you depended and looked up to, to a parent and then they disappointed you by the acts that they did and then all of a sudden you felt abandoned? And in our lives, we can experience this over and over and over again. We can experience by our teachers, our bosses, our parents, our siblings, our pastors. You know, many of us, have dealt with pain and failure. And the more failure we experience, the harder it is to trust. The more we experience failure, the more we, we see disappointment, the more we, we, people stab us in the back, the harder it is to trust. The failures we experience can ruin our view of God. And depending on how we view God will determine if we trust him or not. So let me ask you, how do you, how do you view God? Do you trust him? If he calls you to a certain place or to a, a certain friend group or to quit a sport or, or to, to share or to buy a drink at Starbucks for someone or if he speaks to you a word for a sibling or a friend, do you trust him enough to do it? And that is the balance between if you trust him or not. Because if we have experienced failure and heartbreak over and over and over again, more than likely, we love God, 
but we don't trust God. How many of us come in and lift our hands and tell God how good he is, but when we walk out and he asks us to do something, fail to do it because we don't trust him? And if we don't trust God, we're not able to be used by God because the only people he uses is people he can trust. And if he tells you something and you don't trust him and don't do it, how is he ever supposed to trust us? You know what I'm saying? Like, so we need to fix this issue of trying to look picture perfect and actually dealing with the things we go through so we can have a trust in God. So depending on how we view God will determine how, if we trust him or not. When we don't trust God, we hide our brokenness and try to look picture perfect. We don't have to hide the stuff we are going through. We don't. We don't have to act a certain way or be a certain way or try to be religious and holy. Religion is about rules. Relationship is about love. And I think a lot of the times in, in Christianity, we can get this religion mindset of rules and regulations. But God is a God when you mess up. He doesn't judge you, he doesn't hate you, but he loves you. And, and he's a God that wants you to be real and authentic. And so this is, this is what I found, is that what's hidden cannot be healed. What is hidden, that's a, that's a good spot, part to say amen. What, what is hidden cannot be healed. You know, whenever you hide it and you're trying to keep it from God, it's going to be in your life until you begin to deal with it. And then when you begin to be authentic, when, you know, whenever you're in here and you're just trying to look the right way, no, that's not what God is wanting. God isn't wanting us to hide what we're dealing with. But whenever we're in worship, whenever we're in prayer, he's a God that will love us through anything, no matter what. No matter if we fail, no matter if we disappointed the people around us, no matter if we hurt others, God is saying, be authentic. Because I still love you, no matter what. What is hidden cannot be healed. Some of us have spent most of our lives trying to look picture perfect while still being broken. We have been here for years and decades, and maybe you grew up in a Christian church or a Christian home, and you have spent your entire life trying to look picture perfect and hiding the things that you're going through. And I wonder how sad and lonely it is because we have put on this mask and God is waiting for us to be authentic. That's why Jesus says in John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He says, I am the good shepherd. Jesus wanted us to know that he isn't like the people who fails us, but he is good. People who fail us come and go. God is with us forever. And what has been disappointing, disappointing to you for a season, God is wanting to be with you in the season and in the midst and letting you know that he is good. The word good means beautiful, magnificent, and genuine. So it is important for us not to view God like I was talking about a moment ago, that he, he is a God of the things that we have experienced. No, when he said, I am a good God, that means, if you didn't know, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when he says that he was good 2,000 years ago, that means that he is good right now. And this is the same Jesus that was sent down to earth to die for our sins so that we can be saved. This is a God that has rescued us from the works of darkness so that we can be healed. This is a God that loves us and that is good. And I'm telling you, if you can begin to shift your focus from your experience to he is good, you will be set free in every single area and it might not look the way that you want it to look. 
And whenever we're in this thing and we're asking God and we're depending on God and it doesn't come in our time frame, I'm telling you, he is still good. I'm telling you, whenever things are falling apart and we're in a COVID season and whenever everything looks dark and the government's going crazy, I'm telling you, he is still good. I'm telling you, whenever your parents are going through a divorce and your family seems like, seems like it's going apart, I'm telling you, he is still good. I'm telling you, when you can't do the things that you want to do, he is still good. And he is a God that wants to shift you from your experience to he is good. From what I have gone through to what he is. From faulty into truth. And I'm telling you, if we can see God as he truly is, things will begin to shift in our lives. He will never leave you or forsake you. So like how your friends have stabbed you in the back and things have fallen apart and you have been hurt by so many different people, he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. He will not abandon you when the wolves come to attack you. He will not forsake you when everything looks hard. He is with you in the midst. We can be real and authentic with God because he is good. And in John 10, 14, it says, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. You know, God wants to know the real us. He wants to know you for who you truly are. They knew him because the sheep knew the shepherd because the good shepherd knew them. And I'm telling you, God is waiting for you to, to not just act a certain way or be a certain way, but to be real and authentic. God wants to know the real you. So how, real quickly, before I end, how, how do we show our real self? So instead of looking picture perfect and trying to do the right things and act the right way, how do we show the real self? How do we be authentic and real to God? And I have two things, quick things. Being honest about how we feel. So when we come in and we're upset about what is happening at home, your prayers should be filled with how you feel. So if you're, you're going through a hard time and you're, you're emotional, when you're in the presence of God, when you're spending time with God at home, it's not like, God, you're good. No, it's God, I'm pretty upset right now. It, you, might, you might talk a certain way or be a certain way. I would rather you cuss in prayer than be someone fake in prayer. I would rather you be honest about who, how you really feel then put on a, a polite nun look, saying, God, you are, no. Pray what you feel. Express your emotions to God instead of, God, oh, it's such a delightful day. And no, you're going through hell and you're lying to God. And I'm telling you, as soon as we can begin to, to tell God how we actually feel, that's when he can begin to shift you. So you might have a cussing problem, but as you begin to express how you feel, God can begin to work in your life. And I'm telling you, if you, t if you speak your emotions and you're honest with how you feel, God will love the authenticity that you're showing. And my second one is getting healed from our past experiences. We, we have all these views and filters that we put on God. And if we can begin to learn to, to get healed, if we can come honest and say, God, I'm still wounded from what that person said. I'm gonna give you an opportunity tonight to get healing from past hurts. And you can come in and just say, God, it sucked only having a mom raise me and my dad absent from the home. It, it sucked being dyslexic and, and struggling with reading and math and it sucked being this way and 
and I was in dyslexic classes and people saw me in there and made fun of me because I wasn't as smart as they are. Coming in and being honest, saying, man, I've been struggling with this addiction for over 10 years. And instead of hiding your mistakes, instead of hiding your failures, instead of hiding what you're going through, getting in the presence of God and saying, God, this is what I'm going through. I'm tired of being fake. I'm tired of looking picture perfect and I'm ready to be authentic. Is there anyone in here who is ready to stop looking a certain way and starting to trust God? Who is ready to stop looking at all of what everyone else is doing and saying, it is my time to be honest. It is my time to be authentic. If that's you, how about you stand up in this place? Everyone, let's stand up.